Hey Juan, Delta One here. We are currently on our way to work. I've been given the request to um, show what transmission fluid I use uh, by Brian. And basically, this is for Sean for the shifting that, um, showing how erratic the shifting is. Um, right now, my transmission fluid is at 132. Uh, just less than 45 seconds ago, it was at 115. Um, the three-way valve is still open. Um, that transfers transmission fluid. Well, transfers coolant that goes to a heat exchanger to heat the transmission fluid is still open, um, which is why it's increasing so fast. Um, I am planning on including a... Uh, um, a shutoff valve in line with the discharge side of that three-way valve um, and primarily what that is for is I want to I want to drop my cooling temps for the transmission instead of it being uh, on one seat like right now it's not bad 167 to 177 is where it runs at but when it gets hot out, it'll get up to 190 something. So I want to put a shutoff valve in it, uh, and I'm trying to decide whether to put an electronic one in it, so I can just inside of the truck, shut it off and turn it on, or basically one where I can put a manual hand valve on it and I can just basically crack it to allow some hot coolant to go back there. Cause like right now we haven't been in this video for a minute and a half. And we're already at 152 degrees from 133 degrees and we're roughly maintaining 35 miles an hour so that tells you but as you can see um, right now we're it's hovering at a thousand rpm now you'd be wondering why would an 8-speed transmission be running at a thousand rpm at thir uh, 30 miles an hour well the reason for that is this these trucks do not shift to eight to the eighth gear in fact below 50 55 miles an hour the truck the truck actually locks out the transmissions seventh and eighth gear it does not use them um i know it sounds odd to not use all eight gears to maximize efficiency but if you go to seventh and eighth gear uh actually you'll be bogging the engine down which in theory would use more fuel, which is why it locks out those two gears cruising inside the city. And a great way to show you that is, let me switch hands. And a great way to show you that is I'll shift it into manual. All right, we're gonna shift down with the cruise control. We're in fourth gear right now. So that means this whole time we've been cruising. All right, I'm gonna shift myself down to first. All right, we're in first gear. I'm gonna show you this. now. I'm still gonna go 35 miles an hour, not gonna go any faster. Um, and every time I push the button, I'm gonna tell you I'm pushing the button and you're gonna see the RPM change, all right? I'm gonna let it shift to where it normally shifts at. So that's me shifting second gear, it shifted. Shifting again, that's third gear. All right, I'm gonna wait till it gets to uh, 2000 RPM. That's me pushing it again, it shifted down. We're in fourth gear, which is where it was cruising at. All right, we're gonna go one more time. It's 2000, that's me shifting to fifth gear. So I'm guessing it was at fifth gear. And when I pushed the gear down, it went to fourth gear. All right, right now we're shifting at 2000. All right, we're staying at 40. I'm just gonna shift. That's me shifting up, that's shifting to six. If you notice, okay, now it shifts down. It took that long for it to shift down. Um. Right now we're running six gear, all right? We're at 1,000 RPM, six gear, 35 miles an hour. All right, that's me shifting to seventh gear. If you notice, it didn't do anything. It didn't shift. It's still in sixth gear. All right, I'm gonna push it again. Eighth gear is doing nothing. It's staying in, it's still in sixth gear. And if you, you think I'm not actually doing it, you can see right there the number's changing. All right, I'm gonna shift down. That's seventh gear, it did not change. Sixth gear didn't change now watch I'm gonna shift the fifth gear and the RPM is gonna go up I'm oh, sorry fifth gear RPMs went up that's because it did it locks out seventh and eighth gear whether I'm shifting manually or not are right, we gonna go back to sixth gear RPM went down 
we're gonna shift the seventh, nothing, shift the eighth, nothing, and we're gonna shift one more time to go to automatic, and it's back in automatic. So, essentially, uh, Sean, uh, if you're watching, um, that's that's why your truck shifts. Well, these trucks shift seem like they shift randomly, or sh seem like they're hunting for gears, um, and that's because you think that you're actually in a higher gear than you actually are you're not you're actually in a um a low gear you're actually running maybe like that entire time we were traveling at 30 miles an hour we we're in fourth gear we we're in fifth gear where you i thought i was in sixth gear but i was actually in fourth gear i mean fifth gear and um that means it locked out fifth i mean sixth seventh and eighth going 30 35 and then it locked out uh, it locked out I'm sorry I'm trying to maneuver around retards and it locked out um, going at my normal speed which is about 40 35 to 40 it locks out seventh and eighth gear so you don't exactly get all seven or eight gears until you actually do um, higher speeds which is one of the reasons why when you do a transmission fluid change on your own in these trucks you have to get up to highway speed otherwise you won't get the transmission fluid everywhere and you won't know what exactly level you need but uh i'm gonna switch out and i'm gonna go and we're gonna transfer to me being in the office so hello everyone delta one here uh it's about three something in the morning it's about 3 38 in the morning i'm way late past when i uh actually got to work which is why i'm really tired um but uh, basically what i'm gonna do is i'm going to try to leave a link um of uh the YouTuber Eco uh, Mopar Eco Diesel, um, and basically he'll be able to show you the fluid that I use. I use uh, Valvoline um, ATF. Um, I think it's I can't remember what it was. I remember it now. I don't remember. Um, but it's LV. It's it's Valvoline Max Life LV. I can't remember exactly which one it is right off the top of hand. Um, but I'll try to leave a link to his channel. Or actually, if I can, I'll try to leave a link to his video um, that actually he uses. Well, he used for that fluid exchange. Um, also, for uh, any help with the actual service of the truck itself, um, I use uh, Motor City Mechanics uh, videos that he posted. Um, most of his videos or a lot of videos at least most of the ones that i've actually personally watched has to do with my generation of truck and do with in my specific engine um so i'll also leave a link to his channel um in the description as well um but essentially uh what we're going to try to do tomorrow because i didn't get a chance to uh register the truck yesterday because i had to go help out a friend um we have to go register the truck in the morning um, because the dealership won't have my brake cable because I ordered a brake cable from Mopar dealer because no one else has one as cheap as the dealer shocker um, but I also needed a new tensioner that I don't know if Copar broke it or what but I need a new tensioner it's only 20 bucks believe it or not from the dealership but guess what it's on back order isn't that a shocker um, so I have to go to, uh, I have to go and I have to register the truck. Then I have to drive out to Lamar Auto Salvage and get a tensioner. Drive back, run errands, and then hope that my brake cable is here. And then I can put the brake cable on and then I can put the tensioner on. And then essentially the truck will be complete. And the only thing that'll be left would be to replace that radio. Um, also, I was asked, um, clearly you can tell I'm tired. I was also asked what the truck looked like now in its complete form. And literally the only thing that's not complete about it is the brake cable. Um, and I was asked what 
does it look like now um i'm going to leave pictures of that at the end of this so those that wanted to know does know um i'm going to try tomorrow if i can to get a list of all the crap that i had to buy for the truck what my truck cost and i'll try to put together a video for those that wanted to know how much did i spend on the truck how much was it replaced was it worth it or pretty much anything like that i'll try to do that tomorrow i'll try to get that together um i don't know if i'll be able to upload it tomorrow shut up i don't know if i'll be able to upload it tomorrow or if i'll it or be uploaded tomorrow morning um about this time which is about three o'clock this time so i don't know if it'll be uploaded then or not i don't really know um but i will try to do that um because apparently a lot of people want to know um, if it's worth buying a flooded truck um, to be honest I must say it it has to fit your fancy and if anyone wants to buy a flooded truck like I did the only thing I can stress it doesn't matter how electric how electrically damaged the truck is from the flood as you have seen with my truck I replaced the entire nervous system of the truck except the undercarriage stuff because that stuff is meant to be underwater anyway interiors not the interior itself but i replaced the interior electrical i replaced the interior modules uh door motors door modules ace uh airbag module um steering control module uh i replaced the steering wheel itself only because i wanted the one with the uh voice recognition and call functions on it review mirror i won't include stuff that i changed to the truck to because it to fit my fancy i won't include that i only include the stuff that i actually replaced like the hvac module i won't include the radio because the radio that came on the truck still worked but i just upgraded the truck i won't include the instrument cluster because again worked i just upgraded it um the tow haul mode um tow haul mode and the tracks control and um, I haven't replaced the computer, the body control module, the, um, it's called an intelligence center. The, I was told that I don't have a tip in my truck, which I know was a lie from the dealership, but it, when you buy it, it says it's an intelligent module. It's not a fuse box. It's an intelligent module, but it's not a tip -em. I don't know about you, but last time I checked, a tip, tip em isn't, a, uh, isn't an intelligent module, intelligent power module, last time I checked. Um, but that and um basically um i'll include what i did to the engine as well um but anyway i would highly stress that if your electrical can be replaced you can source that crap out to the fullest um and what i mean by that um you you can there are many youtubers on on here like I can't remember his name off top I can't it, uh, I think it is it Chris rebuilds I can't remember I'm really tired because I can't remember a lot of people's name right now he rebuilt the Tesla that was flooded and he's working on his second one literally he pulled the interior and electrical out of that car and replaced it with everything else from a other Tesla now he's doing it with multiple Teslas to rebuild one Tesla so electricals can be replaced what I would hope that you can actually do if you do get a Copart vehicle that's been flooded, you need to look at two things. Electrical has nothing to do with it because it's flooded. What do you care if the electrical screwed up on it? What do you care? The first thing is how sophisticated that vehicle is. So like if it's a BMW, like a 2015 or so BMW that's been underwater to where the truck, the car does not have any power, I highly would suggest not looking at that car because primarily there are so many modules and computers that are on a BMW that you're going to be, you're going to be, pardon my language, but asked out with that car, guaranteed. If you can get one that's running, powers on, that's been in the flood, you're better out. That If you want one that badly, you can do that. Uh, but one, look at the condition of that vehicle, I'm not the, not the condition, but the sophistication of that vehicle um trucks are getting sophisticated but they're not as sophisticated to that point again i have an st ram with the uh, and i outfitted it with slt harnesses on it 
so my truck didn't have all these extra modules and lines and wiring and crap like that um the other thing that you want to make sure of which i really should have said that one first because that's the most important thing is the truck or car mechanically sound my truck was at a dealership that had been taken into taken in for service and it flooded while it was at the tire while it was at the dealership being serviced the mileage that was on the truck is the same mileage that was on my um, sticker so the truck had recently been serviced and it was not running so there was no chance of it I won't say no chance there was the chances of it being hydrolocked was low um, the transmission again wasn't operating at that time so the chance of the transmission fluid being throughout the entire transmission system was low um, but again if you need to look at those two things when it comes to a flooded vehicle if you really want to get a flooded vehicle from Copart is the vehicle mechanical mechanically inclined to run if you can get it running without spending a ton of money doing it and two how sophisticated is the electrical system on the vehicle itself because the electrical is going to have to get done depending on how flooded it was but the question is how how much electrical do you have to do in my case I had to replace 90% of my electrical in the truck only 90 I say only 90 because other stuff that was in the truck that was I don't consider that part of the major part of the electrical that's why I'm leaving it in at 10% but if you're in a BMW that was under flood and underwater to the windshield like my truck was you're probably not gonna get as lucked out as I did um, uh, and another thing when it comes like mechanically sound my truck's only got 45,000 miles on it I could risk it being bought in a non running condition at 45,000 miles on it. I could risk it um, but if you get the truck had a hundred thousand miles on it hundred fifty thousand miles on it again you can risk it if you don't plan on reusing that engine or transmission because it's nearing the end I won't say it's nearing the end of the life for that vehicle's usability but I will say that chances are even if there wasn't anything wrong with that engine before there is going to be something now because you're going to get to that point where it's at the mileage where stuff would start breaking or stuff would start failing and you will the very first thing that you'll get is you'll get battered like you shouldn't have bought a flooded vehicle man because the vehicle is failing but it's not because it was in a flood it's because that vehicle is at the mileage where stuff is going to start failing so unless you're going to planning on replacing that engine transmission I would really look at the miles that is on the engine and the body if you're going to get the flooded vehicle in the first place to see how mechanically able it is because I mean yes there's very little that you can do when you're at the Copart dealership and that's anything from looking at if there's any oil water and oil filters wet dirt in the engine compartment water underneath the trim stuff like that um, basically those are the only two like I wouldn't even say rules I, those are a must if you're gonna buy a flooded vehicle but as you can see in my case it works out um, really to be honest with you any vehicle will work out um, when it comes to a flooded vehicle it really depends on how much money and effort and time you're willing to put into actually getting that vehicle on the road um, so for instance um, there is a there is a threshold I will say this: there is a threshold from when you spent too much on this vehicle so for instance if I bought like a let's say a Malibu where I can go on Copart and get one that's been just in a minor damage for five grand. If I bought the one that was flooded for three grand and I spend three more grand getting it, you know, cleaned out, stuff replaced, electrical done, I'm still 1,000 over the hole. But I'm close enough to that 5,000 to where I can justify it's something I wanted to do to just something to do. Um, if you're just doing this to be doing it okay I'm a thousand dollars in the hole but there's gonna be a point to where if you got seven eight grand into this car you only paid three grand for and you could have gotten one that had minor body damage for five grand now you've gotten into the threshold where it's not worth it in my case this Rams worth 30 grand according to the MSRP of current value of the truck that I have to register for 
the truck's worth 30 grand I only spent eight grand on the truck getting it bought and shipped here fees and everything I only spent less than two grand maybe 2,500 if I'm unlucky getting the truck in so I spent less than 10 grand on it I'm still 20 grand out of the hole for getting the same truck with the same miles at a dealership so also um, I've been asked what the truck looks like I might have said this already in the vlog I don't know um, I will be leaving the pictures there's three pictures one while I was at work I was standing on top of a semi truck I think um, and I just took it I just figured it, it looked pretty cool to take it so I just took it and it was supposed to rain that day and it doesn't like to wash everything off the truck so I decided to wash the truck well yesterday now uh, and I decided to wash it and I took pictures of it after I washed it so here are these and I'm signing out peace Thank you.